Well, good morning. morning. It's good to be together in the house of the Lord and to be gathered. Oh, excuse me just a second. During that baptism, all that water was around made me thirsty. And what a great day to celebrate Denver's baptism. What a great, not only memory, I know you're getting it down on, on, the, on the photos, but what, what a great day to put in the memory of us as the church. Um, you know, I'm, I, I'll confess to you that I had a little bit of difficulty. I've been excited about this, this sermon series on the I Am's of Jesus. When Jesus says in the Gospel of John, I am, I've been excited since, since Ann Russell sort of got us going this past week. And I've been excited about looking toward the Good Shepherd. One of the most beautiful images that we have of our faith is Jesus as the Good Shepherd. You know, you can find it in churches all around. You look and find in churches where there's stained glass windows. You go. I know I served at Central uh, down there for a while. One of the most beautiful stained glass windows is still in that building, although they've gone along and, and they've become covenant together with broad acres. But one of the most beautiful images of Jesus as the Good Shepherd is in that church. And, and, it, and it's beautiful how those things speak to us. But I'll confess to you that it's been a sort of a... I don't know if it's just me. I don't think it is. I think probably many of us have been distracted by the world around us and the things that are going on in the world and, and distracted... And I'll tell you the truth, I, I, I've, I've been a little heartbroken, a little, disheart, a little disheartened about so much that's going on in our world this week. As we were gathering together in peace to pray and to listen for the scripture of the Good Shepherd, this, even this morning there were police officers who were shot in, in Louisiana. My heart is broken when I, when I look out and I see a world where, where people feel like that the law doesn't matter anymore and, and maybe they are upset about something and they can do anything they want and, and, and people get in a truck and will drive over 80, 90 people in Nice. My heart is broken when I think of those on the rooftop picking off police officers while people were trying to peacefully demonstrate, my heart is broken even when it, within our own church there are people who are breaking covenant. And, you know, regardless of how you feel about one side or the other, we as uh, people, people who are Methodist and elders and leaders in the United Methodist Church take an oath to uphold the discipline of the United Methodist Church and because it's based on Scripture. But we take an oath and a covenant and we form a covenant. We, are, we as United Methodists are a covenant people. And my heart breaks as that covenant is being broken flippantly by whole conferences in the United Methodist Church. And so, as I forced myself out of the, what seems like a broken, falling apart community around me, I forced myself back into the world where I'd been studying, forced myself back into the world of John, back into the world of John telling us about Jesus. And I went to our scripture for today in preparation to talk to you about Jesus, the Good Shepherd. What a, there's probably no better healing than could have happened in my life. And so I guess by way of uh, challenging you, I'll challenge you that if you feel like you're overwhelmed by the things, the news of the world, go into the text. I'd like the text to sort of lead us through the sermon time today. Listen for the Word of God. Jesus starts by saying, very truly, and, and I'll tell you that in the original Greek, it is, amen, amen, or amen, amen, the way we would say it. 
Very truly, I mean, I mean, I tell you. And I want you to know that any time you're reading the Gospels, and particularly the Gospel of John, and you hear a truly, truly, or a very truly, or a I mean, I mean, that's a time to sit up and to listen. It's a time where things have been moving along and something's about to change and Jesus is about to enter into a discourse and this was the last discourse, public discourse he made uh, the, before he, the rest of the time he told stories and had longer things he had to say. In the Gospel of John, it was to his disciples as he was on the way to Jerusalem to be crucified. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him. And the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he had brought out all of his own, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger. And they will not run, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of the stranger. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, them being the Pharisees, but they did not understand what he was saying. Now, there's a number of things in here that is talking about. Now, first of all, Jesus uses, John tells us that this is a figure of speech. If you look at the original Greek word for that, it can be translated uh, proverb, uh, the, sort of roughly uh, equivalent to the word proverb. Uh, and, or, or parable. But Jesus is talking, it seems like in a, in a large figure of speech, parabolic way, about who we know who he's talking about. Now to back up and to figure out the, the, the context in which this conversation happens, Jesus had, in chapter 9 had been talking to the Pharisees because the Pharisees were very upset and were trying to get to the bottom of the fact that Jesus had healed a man who was born blind. John tells us that this man who was born and could not see and now comes into the presence of Jesus and now he can see. And so you would sort of understand how they might not understand when Jesus says, Amen, Amen, I, I, I tell you who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate climbs in by another way and is a thief and a robber. And, and that's not anything like what they've been talking about. The original text did not have chapters here. We put a chapter here so we understand Jesus is talking about something else. But the Pharisees were in the conversation and they were sort of lost. They didn't understand that they were, that Jesus, when he was talking about the ones who came in by another way, he was talking about the Pharisees. But let's not be too hard on them because he's talking about us maybe as well. He said... The shepherd is the one who has access. The shepherd is the, one who, is the one who goes in by the gate. The shepherd is the one who the gatekeeper opens the gate for him. That tells us that Jesus has access. That's the way to go in and out. And in other words, there is a place of fold. There is a sheep fold. It's a place where they kept sheep at night to keep them safe. It's kind of, you know, had the... Uh, uh, Stones that were gathered around, and maybe it's on the side of a mountain, stones around part of it. But there was one way in. And that was the way Jesus, in his figurative speech, and, and Jesus goes back and forth between figurative speech and, and literal speech, where he's, uh, he, we'll hear about in just a minute. But in this figurative speech, he talks about the shepherd who gets access, who has access. And in other words, sort of in the context of what I was talking about earlier, I think our community, my heart's broken because our community, and we tend, we tend to, we tend to act as as a culture, as though law, as though uh, there is not something that there's an appropriate way to act. That we're sort of making it up as we go. That we just do what we want out of the insides 
you know, what, whatever we want to do, we're going to do it. It doesn't matter if there's a gate. If I want to go in, I'll go in over the fence if I want to. And Jesus says, if you go in over the fence, you're a thief and are a robber. The good shepherd goes in by the way of the gate. Now, some more background, Old Testament background of this. If you, uh, we look in Ezekiel 34, um, some really harsh words for bad shepherds. Talking about the good shepherd, and some of the background that Jesus is, that Jesus is bringing this out of, and the background that should have been in the minds of the Pharisees who were listening to Jesus were these words. The word of the Lord came to me, that is Ezekiel, uh, mortal prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Now what they were talking about was not the shepherds who were out there in the pastoral scenes uh, taking care of sheep, but those who were shepherding over, who were leaders and gathered over and leading over Israel. Prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, to the shepherds, thus says the Lord your God. Ah, you shepherds of Israel, you have been feeding yourselves. Should not shepherds feed the sheep? You eat the fat and clothe yourself with the wool. You slaughter the fatlings and you do not feed the sheep. You have not strengthened the weak. You have not healed the sick. You have not bound up the injured. You have not brought back the strayed. You have not sought the lost. A lot of stuff. For the bad shepherd. And then God ultimately leads to verse 11 where he says, For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for the sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks, when they are among their scattered sheep, so will I seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places in which they have been scattered on the day of clouds and thick darkness, I will bring them out from, from the people and gather them from their countries and will bring them into their own land and I will feed them on the mountain of Israel by the water courses in, in the habited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pastures and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. They shall lie down in good grazing land and they shall feed on the rich pasture pasture of the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, says God, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. The Lord says, I will do it. The bad shepherds are not doing it, but I will do it. That's some of the background, and there's another text from Zechariah, which is an oracle uh, it's a messianic oracle, they call it. Biblical scholars call it. It's a messianic oracle that talks about the, the, the requirement of the death of the shepherd that the sheep might be scattered in order that God might refine the sheep into something beautiful like gold or silver. These words, background. So then Jesus said to them again, now they, they didn't understand, but they should have understood. That's some of the background that they should have had. They didn't understand. So Jesus said to them again, very truly I tell you, I am the gate of the sheep. So he, now, and Russell is going to talk to you more about the gate next week. So I'm not going to talk a whole lot about the gate. Other than the fact that the gate and the shepherd are, are connected together they are intimately related together, the gate and the sheep. And the idea of the gate and the sheep together tell us of a Christ, who it, of Jesus, who was the Christ, who was the very Son of God, who was the very God of very God, who was the one who came into the world to fulfill what God had for him. And so Jesus, in his being the good shepherd, was coming to fulfill what God had given him to do. So again, Jesus said, in verse 11, he said, I am. And, this, and there are four I am's in here. Two times he says I'm the gate and two times he said I'm the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. I'm the, in, in the Greek, I just like to say it, the kalos pomen. 
kalos, which means good or true. Jesus is saying, I am the true shepherd. He had been talking in figures of speech, now he's talking about reality. He says, I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Now the hired hand doesn't care anything about the sheep. So the things that we know about the shepherd are the shepherd knows the sheep. The shepherd intimately has a relationship and a connection with the sheep. The sheep intimately have a relationship with the shepherd in, in such a way that they can hear the shepherd's voice and they go and they follow. Sheep follow the shepherd that they've built a relationship with. Now, sheep, Jesus later on talks about being given these sheep, and he says, uh, these are the sheep of my fold, but I have other sheep who are not in the fold that are mine as well, and I'm going, that we're going to bring those in. And that is a reminder to us that Jesus didn't just come out, and there's an odd little passage at the end where John is giving an explanation to this teaching of Jesus, or Jesus is explaining it more, when he says God, it almost seems to say, it almost seems to say that God uh, um, loves Jesus because Jesus is being a good shepherd, bringing in the sheep. And, and we might get the idea from that, which I, I don't, it's, the, it's verse 17, for this reason the Father loves me, he says. Uh, close study of the text would help us to understand that it, it's not that God loves Jesus because Jesus is bringing in more sheep. It's not that Jesus has got a big whole bunch of sheep that's come into the fold and now God loves him. It predisposes a love that God had for Jesus even before Jesus came to the earth. Because God is love and God loves Jesus. And in the context of the Gospel of John, Jesus is totally connected to God. You know, in our small group ministries, and in, a, and in our church, we're talking about how important it is to have and cultivate that relationship to God. We say worship plus two. Worship, that connection with God, plus the connection with ourselves together with God and one another. And then the, sec the third thing is that we go out into the world. One of the beautiful things I see in, the, in here is that there is a sheepfold. And the shepherd comes in and out by the gate. And the sheep know the shepherd's voice. And the shepherd leads them out. The shepherd leads them out of the fold. That means that we ourselves want to stay in the house and around the table and not go work out in the field as in the My House is Full song says. The shepherd leads us out. With this context of what the Gospel of John says, Jesus says, what I give you has been given to me by the Father. That relationship. And that relationship is so close with the sheep. And I... I have to ask the question to, in my own mind, and that is, is what should the sheep look like? The sheep and God and Jesus are inexorably connected together with one another. And don't get me wrong, the, the primary image of this text is Jesus who is the Christ Christ in our midst, who is the very God who calls us and leads us. But how should we respond as sheep? Hearing these other stories from the Gospel of John, it's not surprising that if you turn to the 21st chapter of the Gospel of John, you find Jesus and Peter out on the lake shore. And Jesus says to Peter, he says, Peter, do you love me? 
Peter says, well, you, you know I love you. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. Jesus says, well, Peter, do you love me more than me? Do you love me? Peter says, Jesus, you know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus said, y'all say it with me, feed my sheep. The last time Jesus said to Peter, he used a different word for love. The first time he'd been used, the first two times when he asked him, he says, Peter, do you love me with a love like God's, like this, unlike any other love, a love that is selfless? And the last time he asked him, he says, Peter, do you even love me as a brother? Do you love me as a brother? Do you love me? And it said Peter's heart dropped. It said he was sad because Jesus asked him, do you love me the third time? And probably also because of the particular word that Jesus used. And he said, Jesus, I love you. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. And so, when we're wondering in our mind what it would like, what, what, it, what it's like to be a community of sheep who are following the shepherd of God, what is it like? What, what are we to be like? And Jesus says to Peter, the one who was one of his very own fold, he said, if you love me, you'll feed my sheep. You'll reach out into the world and you'll make a difference. This world where community seems to be crumbling, at least in my heart, and it's breaking my heart at every corner, is desperately in need for a community of people who are following the shepherd, the good shepherd. A community of people who are not concerned with their own selves, but are in concern for the other. Who are, not, who are concerned enough for others that they will stop at no lengths to share the love of Jesus Christ in the world. Now, there's, that seems to be a daunting task to, love, to share the love of Jesus Christ in the world, but it's not. Sometimes it's very simple. A friend, a great friend of mine, shared with me this week a story about when she and her family moved into a new community and were looking for a place to go to church, looking for a place to connect, looking for, for a place to walk together with the good shepherd, Jesus. And, you know, they went through the kind of thoughts about, oh, there's a church right across the street, we could go there, and there's a... But uh, they said, well, they had an aunt that went to this Methodist church down the, down the street just a little ways, and so they went there. Picked up their aunt and went to church. And uh, that afternoon, about middle of the afternoon, they received a phone call new in the community, but it was a young it was a couple about their age who called and said, hey, we saw you at church. So glad to have you at church. You know, on Sunday nights, what we do is we gather and we come to church. We've got Sunday night service. We'd love it if you all would come and meet us and we'll go to Sunday, ser the Sunday night service together. And then what a lot of us do is we go out and we, we'll go out and get something to eat together. That was the very beginning of them getting connected with this church. So connected that when they were going through a difficult time, she was going through a difficult time, one in their family was actually dying with cancer. That people in this church went to their home and mowed their yard for six weeks while they were in the hospital. 
To be the community of God who is sharing the love and the care of God in the world is not, is not overly complicated. But our problem sometimes, my problem sometimes is that sometimes I think like my house is filled up and I have all I need. And my question for us today, for us to think about, is do you believe that there might be people who are out in the communities of our world, in the fragmented communities of our world, who might need a call, who need somebody to show them God's love and for their lives to be changed. The way that happens is through us, through you, through me, through all of us, showing that love of God in the world. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.